Hello and welcome to Karate360, where we bring you all the latest and greatest karate news from around the world, from local to global, and we talk about all the things going on in the karate world. I am your co-host, Kaylin Angloss. I'm Richard Mosdell. And we're going to get started with the latest episode. You almost sang the song there. I almost did. I know, I know. I I said to stop myself. I was like, wait, wait, you're singing the song. And go. go. Start the show, you will kick high and I will speak low from local to global. It's a thing that you love. Karate! San Rokumaru! Hello and welcome back to Karate360. Hi, how are you? How are you? <laughs> Welcome to the Fox Global News. <laughs> yes, the, the, the uh, AI has taken over. There we go. <laughs> hey, I'm going to America. I'm heading to America, whatever the rest of the song is. Who's that? That's Bruce Springsteen, obviously. I'm Bruce Springsteen. Come on, going to America. I, wait, yeah, it is Bruce Springsteen. Bruce Springsteen. But I'm going to the America. To the America. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to America. Is your first time? Uh, not the first time, but first time probably in my adult life, actually. Yeah, besides just passing through. Okay. We are going to Seattle for the first time. Seattle. Yeah, have you ever been? You must have been. I've been to Seattle. Probably h- hundreds of times. Yes. Sleepless in Seattle. Sleepless in Seattle. <laughs> I, w- I don't know about that, but I am going over It's a movie. There. I know. Yes, I'm aware. <laughs> Meg Ryan, right? <laughs> yes. Oh, wow. Oh, look at me go. That's right. Not as young as you look. <laughs> Not as young as I look. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever. We'll take it. <laughs> yeah, this weekend I'm taking a few days off, heading to Seattle, and I'm uh, going to check out the, the city, the big city. You are going to see a baseball game. I am going to see a baseball game. I'm not only going to see any baseball game, Richard. I am going to see the Boston Red Sox play wow. in Seattle. You're not saying. I am I am saying. Now, this is a big deal for me. They're from Boston? They're from Boston. Okay. They wear Red Sox. Yeah. And I have been a longtime fan for about 20 years. Wow. And I've never seen them play. You've never seen them play for 20 years? Well, not live. I've seen them play, obviously, on TV, but I haven't seen them play live. So I'm going to go see them. All right. So between going to a Red Sox game for the first time or getting a free trip to the Karate World Championships, what would you do? Ooh, I would for sure take the free karate trip to the, oh, okay, to okay. the yeah, World Championships. Mm-hmm. Just because, I mean, it's in, Seattle's great and, <laughs> and wonderful, <laughs> yeah, exactly. but it's just right there. Yeah, like, it's, it's just like. What's the appeal yeah. to the Red Sox? How did you get hooked? Ooh, well, I, lo- I, I played ba- my, when I was growing up. It was karate and baseball. That, those are my yep. two sports. See, that's, that's like a I Japanese play. person. Yeah, that's what I know. <laughs> <laughs> I would fit right in. <laughs> yeah, uh, and then just the, kind of random how I picked the Red Sox as my favorite team. I just liked one of their players, Nomar Garcia Parra. I kind of grew up trying to yeah, yeah, mimic great. him. Yeah, as if you would know. <laughs> you wouldn't even know. What position did he play? Huh? I don't know. Uh, Is that the goal one where tender? They, <laughs> they shoot pucks in nets, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's the one. Just stay in your lane, Richard. Just stay in your lane. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we don't need to talk too much about baseball. <laughs> we'll start a baseball 360. I'll start one. When we go to Japan, let's go to a baseball game, and then we'll do a Facebook Live from the stands and how noisy it is. Okay. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Apparently, from what I heard, I haven't seen, but yep. the Japanese baseball games, they're very extravagant, right? They have, like, fireworks. And, oh, it's big. And, yeah, like, like somatics and everything. In oh, there. they have, like, cheerleading groups at the front. And there's, like, you know... There's like a bunch of salary men who made like the cheerleading group and they like one guy holds up a sign and mm. they sing that song. And like so when like Hiroki Suzuki is up, they go, Hiroki, 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 Suzuki, oh, Suzuki. And then they have um, they have those plastic megaphones where you can yeah, yell yeah, yeah, and the they noise bang makers. them together. Yeah, and, yeah. Oh yeah, it's awesome. Crazy. So it's like a whole spectacle. Yeah, it's pretty cool. But if you catch the ball in the stands, mm. you have to throw it back. Oh, yeah? Some teams, some specific teams in American baseball have that. Okay. Where it, Only if the other team, if the other team, the opposing team hits a home run, just as a sign of disrespect, you throw it yeah, back yeah, on the field. <laughs> I want this piece yeah, of junk. That's right. How dare you? So that does happen. Interesting. It's okay. so a little crossover there. I'd fit right in in Japan. So there's a book called You Gotta Have Wa. Ah, uh, you told me about this. Right? If you replace every baseball word with karate word, you've now understood karate in Japan. Mm. Very interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. And, ba- and baseball is quite big, obviously, in Japan. Huge. Mm. You said huge. baseball and soccer are the top two, right? That's right. Like, for example, when karate was trying to get back into the Olympics and baseball was trying to get back into the Olympics, yes. if Japan had to choose over which one, baseball is going through. Oh, yeah? Really? Oh, yeah. That's how that's how deep it is. And it's it's just because they have a huge pro league. Everyone plays it. Mm. Not that it, they wouldn't want karate to get through. Sure. But... You know, Japan was like, listen, you're taking baseball and, and karate. Yeah, and karate. And karate. And karate. <laughs> yeah. Back, karate back home here in Victoria. Summer camps are going wild. That's right. Huge packed. classes packed. I saw. It's just crazy. Just yep. crazy. Yep. Kids are training hard, working hard. Um, 
That's yeah, actually really fun. Like they do 15 classes in a week. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, I never, when I was a kid, had 15 classes in a week. Like if I had five or six classes in a week, I was like, holy smokes, I'm getting a lot of karate in this week. Five or six classes, but 15? 15. That's insane. Yeah. We were taking them, doing takedowns with them yesterday and they're like, that's it? That's we can do way more than that. <laughs> way more than that. I'm like, okay, we're going to do sweeping takedowns. Uh-huh, give us some more. Yeah. Wow, okay, this is awesome. Yeah, they're great. And, you know, I want I want people to think karate is something they really, really need in their life, mm-hmm. and they really have to become a black belt at some point. That's great. And, yep. it, you know, we've talked about it before. Summertime or the typical summertime, you know, a lot of karate schools and a karate training shuts down a lot of times no karate why the heck would you ever want to do that why would you do that and especially I mean these are kids they're fun it's 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 you know teaching them karate teaching the value of Mm -hmm. karate Mm -hmm. but if you're even an elite athlete sometimes you take the summer off it's almost like there's not much tournaments you just kind of back off and it's like Like, how do you do that I can get it if you live in a place that's minus 30 degrees for six months of the year but these people you know most people only go to the dojo once a week or twice a week for an hour like two hours a week you can still squeeze two hours a week yeah for sure Get I the mean, if you're an elite athlete, that doesn't cut it. That's not enough. No. But uh, yeah, you got to keep training through the summer. But uh, yeah, I like so much. I like how hot. It's funny here because kids aren't used to sweating, mm. and they go, oh, "I'm hot, sweating, I'm so sweating, hot, I'm sweating." Yeah. I'm like, "Yeah, that's what happens." They walk in and go, "It's really hot today." I know it's really cold today, isn't it? I'm like cold? What do you mean? If you're in Tokyo right now, when you wake up in Tokyo. It's 30 degrees it's crazy. at 80% humidity. That's insane. So you wake, if you don't have the air conditioning on, like I used to, I don't, I, I was able to survive with the air conditioning, but I needed a fan. Right. If I didn't have the fan on, I literally wake up and have to go take a shower. That's crazy because you've yeah. been sweating all night. Yeah. And then you get to training and you turn the heat on. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. Some people are known to do that now. So many people die. It's so much more hot, hotter in Japan just because of global warming. Okay. That people will actually die. That's not just karate people. Like ju- this is actually known to judo people will die in uh, every couple of years from heat exhaustion. Just from training. So actually they had to, a couple of years before I left, everybody in their dojo, you know, all of Japan, were supposed to put a monitor which showed one side was the temperature and the other side was the humidity. Okay. And then there's a gauge and the gauge was like green is okay, mm. yellow. At red, you weren't allowed to do fitness in the room. Crazy. Because there's a chance of heat exhaustion. Holy smokes. Yeah, we had some kids collapse from heat exhaustion. They actually stopped sweating. It's weird. Like, their body's cold, and they stop sweating, and then they they collapse. Sure. And then you think, like, oh, no, their body would be, like, sweating like crazy, but they get... Because the, the body can't cool itself anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it just shuts down. <laughs> it just shuts and down. And then they shut down. Yeah, yeah, it's That's weird. insane. That's insane. Well, before we move on to uh, what we want to talk about today, something that I wanted to bring up here in the beginning. This is not a segue at all. This is the worst segue going, but we're going to talk a little bit. Get married. Bit. Yeah, no, <laughs> we're not going quite that far. This, <laughs> not this karate specific. Okay. Uh, I wanted to bring up a story because people like stories. I, I love think. stories. Yeah, I think people like stories. And I want to talk a little bit. I was trying to think of what kind of value can we bring in the Karate 360 podcast? What can we kind of talk about a little bit? So I always think about... What do people do before they go into competition or before they go for a belt test? You know, Mm -hmm. leading up like the day of or leading up to it, you know, the nerves are getting them. What kind of preparation do they have going into it? And everybody's trying to do everything. Happy meal. Happy meal. Some people that works. (laughs) I know people. You laugh, but I know people. that. Oh, I'm not joking. Like literally. Yeah, yeah, I know people. And I remember when Tiki Donovan came here uh, ages ago and I said to him, like, what do you, because that's when the British team was at the top. Yeah. Like, what do you guys do for like food and stuff? Like food. We go to McDonald's. We eat. And then we go and then we blow them all away. I'm yeah. like, okay, okay. Yeah, I won't ask any more questions. There we go, playing right into my hand <laughs> yeah. here. So what I'm trying to get at is what you want to do is you want to do what works best for you, obviously. Yep. Try and play around and see what works best for you. My very first nationals, so here's the story. Very first nationals, 2006 in Newfoundland. Mm-hmm. Uh, first time I've ever been there, obviously. Everything was kind of new. And back then when I was, well, I guess it would have been 16, 17 years old, I you know, wasn't really energetic you know i just go mm-hmm. about the trainings just kind of did my own thing worked hard and kind of kept going but when it came to nationals you know it was my first one and it kind of got to me when i went up for my to compete for kumite i was like so fired up i was like screaming <laughs> and i was just like going crazy when i scored yeah. a point i was like, ah, like yeah. just going crazy and i remember uh my coach sandeep coach sandeep yeah. at the time said like where did that come from? Like, who <laughs> is this guy? Like, just pump. I was like pumping everybody yes. up, getting fired. But then I realized, you know, I didn't do very well on my first nationals. I realized that that wasn't 
that wasn't me. Like that wasn't exactly yeah. how I should be preparing myself. So I kind of learned from that. It took me a couple more nationals, but I found that what worked best for me was really calming myself down and just uh-huh. kind of like getting yeah. in my zone, focus, slowing everything down. And then I would perform better when I went into competition sure. or even for, for my belt test. So basically the moral of the story is find what works best for you in competition or or in a belt test, what leading up to it? Do you have to be amped up? Do you have to be kind of left mm-hmm. alone? Do you have to be quiet? Do you need a sparring partner? Do you just need to do some shadow boxing? What do you need? So play around with it. So if you you know if you're uh, yellow belt, orange belt, whatever, going for your next belt, just think about that. What can you do to kind of help yourself? Try and find what works for you. And especially if you're an elite competing athlete, you want to play around with it, but try and kind of have it hashed out before competition, before nationals. But, you know, see what works best for you. Yeah, exactly. I think the best athletes I ever saw, they look at it as a job. Yeah, for sure. I, I remember watching Don Sharp compete, and he would like literally just sit in a chair and just watch. You know, like, okay, I'm going to get up in like two hours. So he'd yep. go do, he'd do like a warm-up and get sweaty and stuff and go back and sit in the chair, and then he'd wait, and mm-hmm. then he'd do another warm-up and go out there, and he'd do his job, and he'd win everything. Sure. Go back, and he'd go, okay, when's my next job? Yeah. And I think he he didn't he knew how to feel nervous and stuff, but he knew that there's a time to activate and time not. Mm-hmm. I think the other thing with food is you have to know how to eat already. Like you have to know how to have three good meals a day, drink water, be really regular, not miss meals, mm. not miss sleep. Mm. Like everything has to be really steady. Then when you travel, you try and maintain a schedule. Yes. Then you adjust and you try and maintain the schedule yes. and then you don't throw yourself off. Yes. And that's one of the things that a sports nutritionist will tell you when you go to see them is, is when you're going leading up to a competition, don't be changing your diet. Like you, you should have, if you're changing your diet, you're changing it well before a competition mm-hmm. days leading up to the competition. It should pretty much look exactly the same as it does. Cause you don't want your body having to process any new stuff. It should I, know exactly what to do. Totally. I think the same thing for belt test. A lot of times you go for yes. your black belt, test you have to go to a different city yes and then you know you're eating out a lot yeah, yeah. like get eat. mcdonald's whatever yeah and uh you haven't been to mcdonald's for years I, I stay away yes i just don't even look <laughs> <at it>. i <laughs> don't <laughs> want that garbage yeah. and uh um let's go to mcdonald's after this I can get a soft cream cone. That's what I can get. <laughs> oh, those are that's not true. I, like, yeah. I have been to McDonald's for a soft cream cone. I can get cone. a soft cream cone, but yeah. that's it. I draw dipped in chocolate. I can't, I can't take the shakes because it's not real shake. No. Um, soft cream's not real cream either. That's not. Um, the chocolate is real chocolate, though. No, it's not. I'm sure it's not. They say you're not supposed to eat. If you're going to go off the diet or have your cheat day on your diet, you should eat really good chocolate. Yeah. So it's just like when you try, actually, I'm going to segue this. <laughs> <laughs> if you're, like, people go for their black belt test, but then they kind of like a vacation. Yes, totally. Right? No. Yeah. It's a vacation. You're there for after a job. The test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. There it is. There it is, everybody. Bringing you guys value. So we Telling do. you what you're going, I think they probably recognize like, oh, yeah, that's why I was like that. Or mm, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. get you thinking the right way, right? Well, you know, eating is interesting because I don't do any supplements, yet I bet you I have more energy than most people, mm. right? Like, Daniel Kaczynski's coming. He's going to be awesome seminar. Like, I'll go. Yeah. Right? After teaching seven hours of classes. No problem. Because I think about... Be it's being regular, mm. right? If you're eating well, you don't have to eat a lot of supplements. I'd also like to think that some people are wired differently, and I would say you are, don't take this wrong, you are <laughs> wired to have a little <laughs> bit of energy, <laughs> yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Maybe some people aren't quite on that level. That's true, that's yeah. true. Yeah, I totally recognize that I'm hyperactive. Yeah, yeah it's absolutely. good, and it works. Absolutely, yeah. Shout out to Ronnie. I sent him a text at like 1.30 in the morning. <laughs> he's like, what are you doing? Go to sleep. <laughs> he knows. He turns, he turns, a, he goes, well, for everybody, because he's got a big cloudy cloud. Like he turns his ringer off at 10, right? Yeah. You know? And uh, yeah, that's just it. Well, it's because I'm regular. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. All right. Well, let's segue right in to a little bit of karate global news. <laughs> All right, coming up here in, well, today is uh, July 20th, Thursday, live Facebook. Thanks for joining in, everybody that's watching us right now. Uh, July 25th, 26th in Poland, the big World Games that's right. is coming. So a lot of people talking about the World Games, All a lo- not all, but a lot of the key players, a lot of the elite athletes heading to, the, to Poland for the World oh, Games. That was it. I saw the list of people from Japan who are on the Japanese team going to the World Games. Going to the World Games. Yeah, there that we go. was it. A lot I, of... 
Uh, go ahead. And I'll you, you find that. We'll post it on the Facebook page. Uh, a lot of the people are going to be there. There is some people that are going to be missing that we'll talk about in a second here. But what we wanted to highlight just about the World Games is just who's kind of the highlight, who who does the spotlight on, and kind of going from there. So let's just start with Kata athletes here real quick. So in Kata, of course, we have Rio Kiyuna, who we talked about last week. I think four years he hasn't lost a single match. Mm -hmm. He's a two-time world champion. He's the defending World Games champion. So look for him in the male Kata to... Uh, uh, to be up there. He's definitely a front runner as well as Antonio Diaz from Venezuela. He won in 2013 okay. and right now the WKF number one athlete Damian Quintero as well from Spain. Of course, we can't have North Cata athletes without mm. talking about Damian Quintero. Um, did you know Damian Quintero uh, in 2002 when he was 18 years old, he went to Madrid. And he went to Madrid to train with the Spanish Federation. He was actually uh, invited there by what's called the High Level Sports Center of Madrid. Okay. And he started training with somebody called Miguel Lopez there. This was in 2002. And he still trains with that same trainer, Miguel Lopez, to this day. So he stayed with that trainer wow. now for what's so that? He, it was a 16 top coach. years. It was a top coach yep. that they gave him from the High Level Sports Center in Madrid. And that's really what set him off. So 18 years old, he leaves home, goes to Madrid, trains at this high level sports center and uh, is it's with obviously a high level trainer stays with him right till today and fun fact of the day Damian Quintero studies what do you think what do you think he studies at, in, in school don't look you're not gonna get it anyway aeronautical engineer wow which I guess is just like a, it's big. a plane engineer or something but aeronautical engineer he's yeah. he's uh, studying in there too so just Absolutely uh, impressive from Damian Quintero. So keep an eye out on him for the World Games. Uh, in kata, female kata, how can we talk about female kata without talking about Shimizu, Kiyo Shimizu, yep. the uh, favorite two-time world championship. Did you know that she hasn't lost a bout? She has not lost a bout in international competition in six years. She's a gold medalist from the last World Games. That's right. She's so is defending so champion. Is so is Araga, that's right, yeah. in the uh, minus 84 kilogram Kumite. Uh, good segue. Uh, uh, Araga in 80, minus 84 kilograms. Keep an eye out from him. Now the minus 75 See, right kilograms. I'm reading it. There you go. I can't read Japanese, <laughs> so <laughs> not yet. Uh, the minus 75 kilogram division. Yep. Usually, Rafael Agai, the top division, he's not going to be there. What? He's got an injury. No. So Rafael Agayev will not no. be attending the World Games. Uh, I should have gone. So that leaves all the eyes on Thomas Scott from the USA and uh, in the minus 75 kilogram division to see if he can contend. And, you know, he's been coming up. I think he got a bronze at the Pan American. So keep an eye out on Tom Scott. And then of course, also in Kumite, Douglas Bros, who has been climbing the ladder and, uh, you know, well, he's been in the elite level for a long mm -hmm. time, but he's the, he, this is the only title that he has not won is the really? World Games. He's won every other thing in the minus 60 kilogram uh, division. Wait, 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 he wait. has not won the World Games yet. Hasn't won the can open yet. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He hasn't <laughs> won the can open yet, and that's one of the big hey ones. Man. So don't we see that? No, he's I'm just not a, he's just I'm not, not impressed, impressed until not impressed. you win the Canada Open, Douglas Rose. Right. So I don't care what happens at the World Games mm -hmm. next year in the Canada <laughs> Open. You exactly. better be there. Uh, so there we go. That's just a little bit of a highlight of what's to come at the World Games again, July twenty fifth. That's a good wrap -up. And twenty sixth in. Poland, you saw the Japanese team there. We'll post that link on there. Raga's mm -hmm. going to be there. Shimizu is going to be there. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and yeah, all the other top athletes from Japan and across There's the world. Seven Japan athletes. World Games there. happens every three four years. Four years. Four years. It's the year after the Summer Olympics for the sports that are recognized right. as international federations but not right. yet accepted into the Games. So this is the last one for karate. It's last one for karate. Okay. For hopefully forever. Hopefully forever. And yeah. uh, because they'll be in the Olympics. That's right. And um, also, when they hold the World Games, they can't build anything new. Oh, supposedly. What do you mean they can't build anything? You know, when they have the Olympics, they do big infrastructure, sp like that oh, country I see. Will do inf infrastructure spending. Yes. It's like the Commonwealth Games. You can hold the games, but you have to hold it in current in the regular facilities that you have. Okay, you can. It's actually a really good idea. Yeah, I think that's a great idea instead yeah. of blowing out your money on new arenas and all this stuff. I mean, and some countries, they wait to get the games they use it as an excuse to do infrastructure building. Right. But, you know, so many countries, like that's one of the things that put Greece over the edge and have a lot of problems. They had so much um, bloat from 2004. But, um, yeah, that's a, it's a neat game to go to because – you you can't you can't just be the world champion and go. You have to qualify. Okay. Right? Um, Very cool. Actually, you might be able to be the world champion. That might get you right through. But it's the best of the best right now. Awesome. Right? Um, but they're still using the current 
um, the current weight divisions and kata they haven't gone to the three weight divisions yet. Oh, they right? yeah, that's they right. Got it. So it might be not until 2019 where we see an event that has three weight divisions. The three that'll be used in the Olympics. That's right. Interesting. Very interesting. So there you go. That's keep an eye out on there. Other things coming down in Karate Global News. The AAU Nationals in North Carolina, the American Athletic Union. Uh, this is not a WKF sanctioned nationals, but this is bigger than the U.S. National Karate Federation Nationals, you said. Yeah. Well, there's, uh, there's some history back there where there may have been at one time back in the 70s when the AAU, which is um, a large organization that uh, represents many different sports in the okay. States. Yeah. Um, but they're, they used to, they're really big with karate. And then they lost, I think how it worked is somehow they lost the WKF. Back then it was Ruko. They lost the, the, the recognition okay. and then the USA and KF got it. And there's some politics in there. Mm. And I think I wrote about it in my thesis somewhere for my master's. And, uh, but the group is really big and it, a lot of the top athletes are in both. Um, okay, but yeah, it's yeah. but the AAU Nationals. I went there a few years ago. It's like twelve rings and yeah, that's serious. Yeah, it's huge. Just crazy. You saw a video of the opening ceremonies there. It was just like the place was packed. They need like the biggest convention center you can find. It's crazy. Uh, now it is happening, uh, or it already did happen. Actually, it started there at the beginning of July. Uh, although most, you know, some elite athletes might do both. They probably weren't at this one. We haven't actually found the results on this one. Yeah, yet. if anybody has the results for the AAU Nationals, send it to us because uh, we wanted to have a look and then. Because now this weekend is the USA and KF Nationals. That's right. Yep. So the big nationals in South Carolina for exactly. the U.S. National Karate Federation. It's yeah, very busy. If you're, uh, I remember talking to George Kotaka once, and they go to both, and then there was a, sometimes a week break in between the two of them. Mm. But this way, it's not. And now they can fly over from Hawaii go to both locations right. and go back and get two tournaments out of yeah, it. It's yeah, actually yeah. kind of nice. So there you go. So that's uh, some Karate Global News, some tournaments coming around. Again, it's the World Games July 25th, 26th in Poland, the AAU Nationals, which already happened, but we would love to have some results if anybody has them out there, and the U.S. NKF Nationals July 19th to 23rd in South Carolina. All right, let's move on to a little bit of technical tactical. Oh, before that, we got to no, talk about... No, let's not. Let's just we got to talk about what's happening Fall in uh, Tennessee. Happening in Tennessee. What Tennessee Karate what Institute. isn't happening in Tennessee? <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, the fabled Tennessee Karate Institute. The fabled. The martial arts school that Elvis co-founded Elvis, and okay. supported in Crosstown reopens next month after 39 years. Wow. And, and Elvis is coming back to teach him? I guess so. Yeah. Partial credit for the revival goes to the lift that the huge... Crosstown Concourse Redevelopment it was given a once distressed commercial district. Mm. Yeah, so we looked at it. Elvis used to teach and train in the building, and he was in there with uh, Bill Superfoot Wallace. There you go. You ever heard of Bill Superfoot no. Wallace? No. Very famous, famous open karate guy. Superfoot. Yeah, he has, he has amazing left leg that can hook kick and all oh, okay. kinds. Okay. He's, he's older now. He's had like his hip replaced and stuff. <laughs> well, he's very famous. He's He would be up there with uh, Fumio Demura in terms of fame. Wow, okay. Okay, interesting. Yeah, and he fought in a lot of the the early open. Some of those tournaments in the old, old days, those were on TV. Oh, yeah? Have. Yep. Actually, I remember seeing some videos, some old, old videos. Yeah, yeah. The white Sideways cotton glo- The white cotton gloves. Yeah, exactly. If even gloves, really. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Anyway, so if you're in Tennessee... Uh, in Crosstown and you want to go to the original uh, Elvis just look up Elvis sometime on YouTube he has a nice silk uniform no, with bell bottoms of course bottoms. he does of course you know, he does and when he does a punch like it's like his whole body like shakes I think in some videos like they actually cut when he actually does a technique so they don't let it go <laughs> how, what his technique is like but uh, hey he was a fan there you go he was we'll a fan that. And, and he had a lot of fans himself yeah alright okay. so there we go now let's move on to a little bit of technical tactical Richard, this one is yours. The North Star. Your North Star. Your North Star. Mm. Um, Am I your North Star, Richard? Absolutely. <laughs> just look, other, just look, I, for me, look to me for guidance. I will other, show you the way. You want to hear a really funny story? Um, the other day, Nick, the club manager, and I were in a bank and we were applying for a new business card. And... Um, uh, a second, I'm, I'm you're typing and you're typing talking and, 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 and the, texting. Tr- I want to really want to do this story you're well. Trying to make some tea over there. I exactly. Okay. So Nick and I go to this um, this bank to apply for a business credit card, and we have a business credit card with one bank, but the bank we have it with right now, you can't see your account online. 
That was it's, amazing. I right? know it's, it's dumb. 2017. What's I know, I know. Here? And we we phone them, and they're they're based in like Quebec, and you get them on the phone, like, what do you mean they went to see it online? They use those the current current things yeah, exactly, that kind of does exactly. the credit card. So we're like, we want to see our credit card status online, and so we went to a bigger you know national bank, and <laughs> uh, so we applied, and so we're in the office. And the lady who is taking care, it's hard, actually hard to get a business credit card. Mm. You know, um, so the lady's helping us. She's from France. Okay. Right? And so we're trying to explain, well, the credit card we're, we're using is from Quebec, and they're, they just don't allow us to see it online. She goes, oh, that's not very good. They got to see it online. So she has, like, the French asset, which we've been kind of teasing, joking about in the office about this French credit card company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this one. Um, and uh, so anyway... So she's taking our information, and, and we have to say, even though it's a, a based on c- the company credit, you know, which is great, but we still had to like list like who was going to use it and our addresses. So like I say, this is my home address. Nick goes, like, you know, his home address is different. And then she goes down, and she goes, oh, there's a thing here where I have to ask you if you're married. I'm like, yeah, I'm married. And, and he's like, yeah. And she's like, no, no, to each other. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it sometimes. I but feel no. like it sometimes, yeah. Uh, we like each other a lot, but not that much. <laughs> um, it was really funny because she looked at us like, I have... It just ha- it just asked the computer has asked me to ask if you two guys are married. And it's 2017. You have to ask. It's not a problem. No, but, but you I just thought for sure. But I thought it was funny because like well, our addresses are actually different. <laughs> you know, um, that was fun. Never know these days. Anyway, the North Star is um, we read a lot about growth hacking, where it is where you can take someone who's new to your service and find out how to give them a better service mm. for the time you get them on board. And then bring them through the first, um, the first experience with whatever you're doing, whether it is uh, something you're teaching or something you're delivering, and how you can make it smoother and know exactly what they want. And once you know exactly what you want, scale it up and get more people to it. Okay. So, for example, with Facebook, their deal. So, their your north star should be one purpose. That you're all your organization is aiming for. Even mm-hmm. you might have several minor purposes. So like Facebook, their main purpose, their North Star was to get all their users initially to use it once a month. Yes. Now it's every day. Mm. If you're not using Facebook every day, you're not who they're building it for. Right. Okay. Right? And they just uh, they were really strict on that, and that has worked really well for them, right? And so in a karate organization, your North Star should be what? That's what I was really thinking about that a lot. Um, well, what would you think? If, if you're running a karate, let's say a karate club, what should the, the North Star of the karate club be? Well, I think it would be the value of the teaching that you're bringing to the students. I think that should be, the, it should be based around the teaching to the students, absolutely, and the, the high-level value of that. Absolutely. So if you have a good high-level value, they're going to participate on a more regular basis. Yes. So the North Star for me would be weekly attendance. Okay, okay. If they're, if they're coming every week, that means I'm delivering a really good service that's retaining them. Mm-hmm. I'm engaging with who they are, and they see the value of where they're going. And if that pathway, the main pathway is to get your black belt and beyond. So that's the North Star. So everything in the organization should be aimed at that weekly attendance okay so for technical tactical what it means that what you're doing in your classes has to trigger everybody to enjoy it because you know what we're really doing a karate club what you're doing when you're um also doing personal training or even going to someone who goes out to a restaurant we're not delivering a workout a karate lesson or a food we're delivering a reaction to Mm. an experience yes Right? What's the thing that uh, parents always say when they're watching the class? Oh, he really liked it. He was smiling. He talks about it at home. Right. He's creating a reaction, right? Yeah. People work out. They're like, oh, my body's getting I better. Good. I feel yeah, good. Yeah. I feel accountable to somebody. I'm doing something really because I feel good about myself, right? Somebody goes out and eats at a restaurant. Man, this is the best steak ever, yeah, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. my God. This like butter. Coming back here. Coming back for more. more money, That's yeah. right. So, um, so when we're training in the class, um, this is really a technical tactical for being a karate instructor, mm. right? But if you're training, you've got to deliver something in the class that makes them want to stay. Yes. Right? That could be where you track what they're doing. Uh, we're going to have all these new stuff coming up for the club. Like we're going to have uh, um, duotangs. Okay. Duotangs. Nick, Nick didn't know what a duotang <laughs> was, right? Like three ring binder. So that people can actually see their monthly schedule. 
all, they'll see the whole month. They can stamp when they were here. Then the next sheet will show when they did all their belt tests. Okay. And then they can add up their classes and know exactly how many more before they challenge right, the test. Right, right. Then they'll have a little student manual to take home so they can review what they're supposed to be doing. All stuff to make them feel more, give more guidance and they can really see a focus because I want as many black belts as possible, but good black belts. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. No, I like that. I like the North Star. I like how you, you brought it in for training and, and actually teaching. But I think it also applies to the athletes as well. Like you kind of have to know what your North Star goal is, so totally. to speak. Like what do you, you know, you might have these little tournaments that you go to, but is your North Star the Nationals? Is your North Star the, you know, Pan Ams? Whatever it is, you have to know what you are actually shooting for. Yeah. That way you know what to train for. You're really self-aware. Like Damien Kataro, yes. right? Like he or his parents... Or somebody recognized that he had to leave that club, yeah, go somewhere else, yes, and get better training because he knew that his goal was higher, yes, and right? it had to be in good training because he's with the same trainer, so. exactly, yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah, that's I, I mean that's a really that's not a you know how to train your arms and legs sort of thing, but I think it's even more important because I mean a lot of people who are out there in the karate world at some point they're mm. going to be teaching. Yes, there's a saying like in that class you're in right now, one person is going to quit. This is a class that will either confirm in their brain, I should quit. Yes. Or, oh, actually, I'm really enjoying this. I should stick it I out for stay. a few moments. Yeah, yeah. It's this workout. Yeah, yeah. You know? No, I like that. And uh, everyone forgets, even if it's two people. It's two people. You have a really small class. But those two, there's a, you know, if you think about it, you're going to get new people in your club or your service who are just new. They've mm. they, you know, done your advertising. You've reached out. But the classes you're doing right now, if they're awesome, people will talk about it more, which will spin into That's a referral word yes. of mouth and bring you in. Totally. So you've got two ways of, of increasing people in your club. Yeah, and the more yeah. people in your club, the more stuff you can do. I remember talking to this guy just the other day. He, was like, he said, oh, I'm shutting down my club. I'm like 80 years old. I'm retiring. I'm like, oh, is there someone taking over? It's like, oh, no, there's just 20 of us. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, we was the same 20 for like last 40 years. Well, 40 <laughs> years, same 20 people. Isn't it impressive? You don't think those 20 people want to keep going, though? Yeah, but they must all be 80 now. <laughs> That's right? true. Like, That's so they're true. all retiring at the same time. <laughs> yeah. But uh, you mean, like, it, it's unfortunate that they, whatever they did, they couldn't. I mean, it, I, I don't think you should have a legacy if, it's, if, it's, if the quality is going to go down. Yes. But anyway, North Star. There and I is. think if you hear about that, that can kind of trigger, like, what? Well, one thing about that. It's all about new users having a better experience as soon as possible and surveying everybody who's using it to find out what, what the core thing is. Yes. Yep. No, I really like that. There yeah. it is. There you go. North Star. Your North Star. All right. Let's go even do a fitness training tip. So I got a little fitness training tip. This is something I've been asked probably mm, 10 times in the past two weeks. I don't know what it is, but this past two weeks. But everybody is asking me about carb loading. Carb loading. Have you heard of this? Of course. Of course. Good. I'm carb Good. loading right now. Are you? I carb load every day. Did you have McDonald's earlier or something? <laughs> oh, no, no. But I definitely passed it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so carb loading is basically the concept, for those of you that don't know, where you load up on carbohydrates in order to have more energy, so to speak, to perform in your performance, whether it's competition whether it's a belt test whatever people late re recently have been asking me well, does it work does carb loading work and how's the right way to do it well carb loading does work it is actually a scientific thing where obviously if you put more carbs in your body you're going to have more glucose to give you the energy to do the performance uh, and your body also stores more and that's what you want the best way to carb load so if you have a, a tournament you know for karate athletes it's tough because usually you carb load if you're like an endurance athlete where you need those stores of mm -hmm. carbohydrates Karate, you don't really, for the most part, need stores for a specific division. But if you're at a tournament where you're going maybe two or three days, absolutely, you can carb load that because you're going to be performing on all three of those days or two of the three days. Uh, even a belt test. Belt test, you usually have a workshop first and then a mm. tournament. So you want to be performing at your best. So, yes, you can carb load. What do you do? We talked about it before. Even in this podcast, you want to make sure you're taking in foods that are familiar to you. High carbohydrates, pasta, sandwiches, whatever. Lots of carbohydrates. Uh, but what you want to do is you want to kind of tail. So if we're looking at a week before your competition or a week before your performance, what you want to do is you want to tail off your carbohydrate intake just a little bit, mm -hmm. just a little bit so your body kind of gets depleted. And then the three days prior to your competition, load up on your carbohydrates. Usually we say about 8 to 10 grams per kilogram of body weight. 8 to 10 grams 
per kilogram, kilogram of body weight. weight. Okay. That's how much carbohydrates you put into your body for three days leading up to the tournament. And then you're going to have all this glucose stored in your body so that when you get to the performance, get to the tournament, get to the belt test, you are you have so much energy or at least you have the optimal amount of energy to get through and perform at your best because that for karate athletes uh, carbohydrates is what is fueling our movements for mm. the most part probably a lot of people carbo load every day and they don't realize they're doing it yeah and people also do it for reasons that they don't need to do it for but that's okay like people mm. carb load just to go to the gym but that doesn't make sense but that's okay I'm talking to somebody the other day that they eat a lot the days they work out feel great, but they still eat a lot the days they don't work yeah, out. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Just always carb loading. Just always carb loading. We always talk about in training too, you want to get the most of, it. now we're just talking training, not so much carb loading, but most of your carbs in your day should come with an hour before your workout and an hour after your workout mm. to fuel your workout and then replenish it after as well. Interesting. So there you go. It's awesome. And it is a thing. It absolutely does work. Try it out and, and you'll be surprised how much more energy you have and how much actually you can kind of fuel yourself. Your muscles cool. don't get as sore. You recover better. All the great things. Does ravioli count? Ravioli would count. Ravioli. Ravioli, of course you would say that. <laughs> <laughs> Just waiting for an opportunity. Yeah, anything you can, right? So there That's we go. Right. That's the, uh, it's not really a fitness training tip, but a little training tip here from the Karate Six Body. The carb loading. Think about it. And if you want to hear more, go to the K-Fit show. That's uh, right. You wrote an article about it. I did write an article about it, and I also did a podcast on it. Right on. on it. So there you go. Check that out if you want in-depth stuff on that. Right on. All right. That pretty much wraps up this episode of the Karate 360 podcast. Oh. Before we get going, some I gotta jump in. coming tournaments. I got to jump in. Jump in. It's in upcoming tournaments. Okay, okay. Well, let me do these ones first. No, but let's do the first one first. Okay. You okay. You, you do the first one. I'll do the other one because it's the last one. Okay. I'll do the first two, and you do the last one. There we go. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> July 25th, 26th, World Games, Poland. We already said that. World Games, July 25th, 26th. Uh, the PKF, Pan American Karate Federation Junior Cadet and U21 Championships, August 24th and 25th. So we still got about a month away to that. But those two big ones from the Buenos WKF. Buenos Aires. Buenos, Buenos Aires. He's Argentina. There you go. Yep, that's right. And uh, the last one. This is really interesting. For upcoming tournaments. Yeah, okay. So I just saw that the Wadokai All Nations Karate Championships are August 2018, Leicester, England. Leicester, England. Okay. So I don't think we brought this one up before. I may have seen it, but All Nations. All Nations. Used to be called the World Championships. Oh, but they can't call it now the that's World Championships. That's right. Isn't that interesting? Ah, interesting. I, I that was like a little loophole. They, okay, that's right. Call World Championships All Nations. So, like, for example, but they had to change the name to the the, the Global Championships. Okay, Global. Global Just Championships. <laughs> global All Nations. Yeah, but I like All Nations. I like All Nations, There's something too. kind of, I don't know, All na it's a hint of old Olympics or something yeah, like yeah. that, you know, yeah. like all nations. I actually kind of liked that when I saw that Wadokai all nations karate championships. Cause it, I think it's better than global or, um, worldwide or something like worldwide that. or, yeah. you know, or, you know, m memorial something or other. Mm. Right. Um, yeah, I just thought all nations was, was, was not a bad term for it. And they're going to have the, I, I'm thinking about, um, helping them organize a team. Nice. Yeah, I'm going to talk to Norma Sensei about it. Cool. Um, and then the one after that will be 2021. They normally have the Wadokai uh, Worlds uh, every five years in Japan, but because 2020 is the Olympics, okay. and the Wadokai is a huge part of the JKF. Yeah, yeah. So they're going to skip it for the year after. So there it is. The All Nations. All Nations. Those are some upcoming tournaments coming from around the world. Keep an eye out for those. We'll keep talking about those as we go by. Hopefully we'll get some results from those coming in, and we'll discuss this on the next episodes of the Karate 360 Podcast. Don't forget, Thursday nights around 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, we do the Facebook Live, and then Monday mornings, these come out uh, for download on all podcast platforms. Right on. There it is. All right, that pretty much wraps up this episode of the Karate 360 Podcast. My name is Kalen Anglos. I'm Richard Mazel. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We will talk to you guys next week. See ya. So, no, no, ready. Dan Rokumaru. Rokumaru. <laughs>